Everyone keeps scratching their heads about Marvel Rivals and why they get so little FPS. In this video, we're going to go over the best settings and to get the maximum FPS and also the major techniques that need to be done in order to minimize input delay in this game and provide a competitive advantage regardless of your PC. Let's get started first with the game configuration file import. So if you head to the first link in the description, it will take you to the game user settings file that is downloaded in a Google Drive. All you want to do is just download this file. So it's going to tell you that it's been blocked by your browser. If it does do that just click on the three dots and click keep and just click show and folder now once you have the file found like this all you're gonna do is right click on it click cut and at the address bar at the top you can click on that and type percent local app data percent and then you're gonna head over to Marvel and save config windows and then just right click on the blank space and click paste and just click replace the file in the destination open up epic games launcher and do the epic games launcher settings so what you're gonna do click on the profile icon on the right click settings uncheck minimize system tray uncheck run my computer starts and then uncheck the desktop notifications then go back and then just launch marvel rivals the marvel rivals launcher is opened all you're gonna do is click on the gear icon on the right and then make sure other settings exit launcher on game starts is checked and press confirm and then just launch the game all right everyone so once the game's turned on all you're gonna do is click play click practice and then just click practice range and let that load up all right so as you guys to see just with these configuration files done we're getting around 240 fps constantly depending on what we're looking at on this practice range now this is pretty good for this system i have an i9 with a 3090 and 7800 megahertz ddr5 32 gigabytes which is a pretty high-end system and as you guys can see we're hovering around 300 to 240 fps depending on what we're looking at now this is just with no upscaling or downscaling this is just with anti-aliasing super sampling is turned off and then and there's no frame generation whatsoever so as you guys can see we're around 330 fps on the top right using the nvidia frame view overlay and we're around 11 ms of pc latency and as you guys can see the gpu usage is all the way maxed out to 100 percent so this configuration file pretty much takes care of everything but there are some nuances that you can test out and see if you want more performance so the first one is, is going to be the super sampling. So go to settings and then display and then anti-aliasing the super resolution type. You can set this to AMD FSR and leave it on balanced and make sure the sharpening is maxed out in order to make it look smooth and press apply. And as you can see, we are going to get around 50 more FPS just because of that. And we're not going to really increase our PC latency at all. It's going to stay the same. But as you guys can see, the game kind of looks fuzzy in certain areas, but it's still pretty much playable and you're going to have a great time on balance. Now, if you're on a lower end graphics card, you could drop this down to performance by going to settings display and just setting the super resolution mode to performance however this is going to make it a lot more fuzzy especially whenever there's stuff moving around on the map and you might not be able to hit your shots using this now i'm not going to be using this since on this pc i could pretty much maintain my monitor's refresh rate the whole entire time which is 144 hertz now if i was on a 360 hertz monitor i would most likely use amd fsr and then just setting it to balance and then pressing apply now since i'm not on a 360 hertz monitor i, I could just set this to off and then just play normally now if we scroll down there are some stuff that you could turn up just a little bit in order to make the game look a little bit better and that's going to be model detail and texture quality you can set these to around medium or high and then see how you like that obviously you're going to have to restart the practice range in order to see the difference now if we go to settings and then just put those back to what i've had them on before just low and medium what we're going to do is going to test around with frame generation mode i'm going to show you guys why you should not use frame generation whatsoever so if i just turn on frame generation and then press apply as you guys can see I do get around 5 to 10 milliseconds extra depending on where I look at of PC latency. So as you can see right here, I'm getting around 23, 24 milliseconds of PC latency, which is huge and it's very, very delayed. Now, if I just turn off AMD FSR frame generation, it's going to drop down all the way to 10 milliseconds, around 12. So it's really not worth it. I know some of you guys are on a lower end graphics card. You, you might be tempted to use it. If you want to play competitive, then do not use it. It's going to just give you terrible, terrible input delay. And latency matters more than FPS in this game just because the FPS is already pretty low because it's so poorly optimized. Now, the next thing is going to be capping your frame rate. And the reason for that is because if you drop down your GPU usage from 98% or 99%, you are going to get lower latency. And it's pretty simple to test this. So right now, we're looking at around 200 FPS, just looking right here. And we're at 97% GPU usage. If I just open up settings and then click on limit FPS and then set this to around 
my monitor's refresh rate, which is 144. We can see that the GPU usage drops down all the way to around 70%, 75%, which is pretty good. And the PC latency drops by around three milliseconds. So it's gonna feel snappier, it's gonna look smooth, and there's not gonna be any screen tearing or stutters on my display. And I'm gonna have lower latency. So if you do have a higher refresh rate monitor, this is gonna be a little bit harder to replicate. You might need a better graphics card. I am on a 3090, so if you have a 4090, this is gonna be way easier for you to maintain. But if you are on a lower end graphics card, just set the FPS to a amount that you are able to get stable on most of the maps. So that could be 90 to 60 FPS. As long as you cap it on there, you're gonna get lower latency and you're gonna be able to play a little bit better compared to just leaving it on unlimited. It's gonna be pretty much it for the in-game settings and what you can do in order to boost the FPS and also lower the latency in this game. The key points are gonna be limiting your FPS and making sure that you're not using frame generation. And if you want slightly higher FPS, just turn on AMD FSR and then just make sure that you're setting the super sampling mode to around formants or balanced. Anything lower is just gonna look way too fuzzy. You're not gonna be able to hit your shots or see from afar. One extra thing that you can do in order to boost the FPS in this game that I found is actually overclocking the graphics card in order to get a little bit more FPS. So let's just unlimit the FPS one more time to show you guys the difference between overclocking it. So right now the graphics card is completely stock. There is no overclocks applied to the graphics card. We're getting around 330 FPS, 340. Now, if we just open up MSI app, the burner, and then load the profile that I have for this graphics card, as you guys can see, it's gonna pretty much just boost the FPS. So now we're getting around 360 here and there, but we're getting around 10 to 15 more FPS. That's what I found that you can gain from a GPU overclock. So that 10 to 15 more FPS, depending on your graphics card and your monitor refresh rate, might make the game go from unplayable all the way to playable and having a great time. So there is a video on my YouTube channel on how to overclock your graphics card. If you wanna go through that whole procedure and how to overclock your graphics card, then go to this video that's gonna pop up right here and just watch that full guide and then just get that benefit of overclocking your graphics card. Then once you've done that, obviously just make sure that you limit your FPS to something that you can get most of the game or you're just monitors or fresh rate if you're getting way more than what your monitor. So for me, that's gonna be just 144 FPS and then just, I'm not gonna use any anti-aliasing or super sampling mode at all. I'm just gonna set it to off and then just play with native graph. But that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. There's not much else you could cover for this game. So there are some stuff that you wanna make sure that you have done already on your PC. And that is gonna be turning on XMP in the BIOS. And then that is also gonna be making sure that your graphics card is not overheating in this game. If it gets around 75 degrees, that's whenever you wanna open up MSI Afterburner or download it and just max out the fan speed to around 80 to 100% in order to lower your graphics card temperatures. The second thing is gonna be also checking your CPU temperatures. And that can be done by just downloading HW Info 64, checking sensors only, pressing start, and then looking at CPU TCL slash TDI if you're on AMD or if you're on Intel, just looking at core temperatures. So as you guys can see, I'm around 50 degrees on my CPU, just with the game capped at 144 FPS. Making sure that your CPU and your graphics card are not overheating is probably the most important part of this video and also turning on XMP. But other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you guys got a latency benefit and also higher FPS. If you did, comment down below. But other than that, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Leave a like, subscribe, and share this with your friends that also play Marvel Rivals. But before you leave, if you guys want a full PC optimization service in order to boost your FPS and lower your input delay in pretty much every game that you play, then go to the first link in the description and book a PC optimization service with us. We go through the whole procedure of optimizing your BIOS, Windows, and overclocking your CPU, graphics card, and RAM. Book by clicking the first link in the description.